Shalom, Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome to the channel. This is Oilfield Disciple. We're going to look at something here um, in Scripture. Um, some uh, foreshadowing that I love to read um, in the Torah. And look at the foreshadowing that, that Yahweh has promised us. All the way up into Yeshua. Where John 1.14 that Yahweh comes in the flesh. And... John 1 1 in the beginning was the word the word was God and the word was with God all right that's telling us that that Yeshua has always been here it wasn't just a manifestation um, at the time that Yeshua came he's not um, it's it's a promise that if we look at we can find it all throughout scripture um, several oh I'd say probably about four or five years ago um, we actually I led a Bible study um, where we went through the Torah and, and the Tanakh and the prophets and we found Yeshua in the flesh over and over and over again um, and also foreshadowing of Yeshua and what he is what he's to come so let's look at something here real quick. Let, me, let me get you over here we're in better sheets Genesis um, <clears throat> now Genesis or better sheet 22 Right here, Abraham's commanded to take Isaac up to the mount to sacrifice him by, by Yahweh. Now, if we understand the, the, um, the time and culture of, of Abraham, if you read that, you can read that in the book of Jasher, that sacrificing your, your firstborn or sacrificing your children to Molech was a, a very prominent thing. Um, it happened all the time. And so when Yahweh commanded Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, um, that was, it was, it wasn't out of the ordinary. Um, it was, it was normal. And, and so it wouldn't have been strange to him. Now we also have this vision and we have to get it out of our minds. Uh, we have this vision of Abraham taking this little boy and going putting him on the altar um isaac was was well into age i want to say he was in his 30s um we've done some study on that i'm still not 100 percent positive on on the exact age of isaac but he was in his 30s i'm sure now, this is kind of key too um so let's look at this this verse here i'm gonna i'm gonna run you through some scripture real quick it says and abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two, settled his donkey. Sorry, I'm used to King James. And took two of two of his young men with him and Isaac, Yitzhak, his son. And he split the wood for the ascending offering and arose and went to the place where Elohim had commanded him. All right. And so Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over there and worship and come back to you. And Abraham took the wood of the ascending offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. And Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, see the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the ascending offering? And Abraham said, my son Elohim does provide himself the lamb for an ascending offering and the two of them went together right. that Elohim has provided himself that's a full <coughs> excuse me <coughs> took a drink it went down the wrong side um, that's a foreshadowing of Yeshua that he would he would be the once and for all sacrifice for us. Now check it out. This is this is where my my um, my revelation came. Um, where are we at? I think I went too far. Nope. Where's it at? Okay. All right. So Isaac was 40 years old, it says, 
and now we skip over to Genesis chapter 25. Now Isaac, that's the, the son that was, was to be um, sacrificed. Now we're not too far um, from where he was taken um, to be the sacrifice. All right. Um, to test Abraham if he was if he was totally a righteous man. Isaac now is forty years old when Rebekah's wife, the daughter Beth Emil, and Isaac prayed to Yahweh for his wife because she was bearing. And Yahweh answered his prayer, and Rebekah conceived. And within her, the children struggled together. And she said, "If all is right, why am I this way?" So she went to ask Yahweh. All right, and Yahweh said to her, two nations." are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body and one people shall be stronger than the other and the older serve the younger. And when the days were filled for her to give birth, twins were in her womb and the first came out ruddy or red all over like a hairy garment. So they called his name Esau. And afterwards, second born, his brother came out with his hand holding onto Esau's heel and so they called his name Jacob, Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. All right, now we know, I'm gonna ride along here and get on with my day here as we, we talk on this. Um, we know that the story goes that Sarah talks Jacob into tricking uh, Esau out of his birthright and the blessing from Isaac. Um, so think about this. Check this out. Yahweh give a give her a prophecy that the younger would serve or the older would serve the younger. And that the, the younger come out holding on to the heel. Alright. So let's take this all into perspective. Check this out. When we speak of the God of of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those are very prophetic because Abraham being the father of many nations and Isaac being the father of two nations, which he, he, or yeah, Isaac being the father of two nations and Jacob becoming the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, very prophetic. Isaac representing the once and for all sacrifice that Yeshua would do. And after Yeshua went to be at the right hand of the Father after sacrificing and shedding his blood for us in the once and for all sacrifice, how are we, uh, as that grace is given to us for salvation, right? What does he tell what is what does Yeshua tell Nicodemus when Nicodemus, the high priest, comes and asks Jesus in the middle of the night and asks him questions? And Jesus says, Unless thou be born again, you'll have no part in the kingdom, right? We'll check it out. Who's the second born? Born again. Born over. Second born. That becomes the salvation. That becomes the representation of the salvation of we must be born again. And we have um, Esau and, and Yeshua, or Yahweh says, Esau I hated, but Jacob I loved. Esau is, his nature, his, his complexion is represented, is, um, is detailed. Jacob's is not. Jacob is this um, meek, very meek, and not weak, meek, the power to destroy, but the wisdom to refrain. Jacob being a meek individual, where Esau was this worldly uh, description, a description of the world. And what are we if we are in the world? We are enmity with God, with Yahweh. So this is all. This is a very interesting foreshadowing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but also Esau. That when we are in the world, we have enmity with Yahweh. But when we are born again, we're the second born. Then we are in the kingdom. We are the grace is given us. 
Make no mistake about that. That grace is given us, but it calls us to be reborn, born again, second born. This is our second life. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that the old man has passed away. Behold, all things become new. You're the new man now. You feel me? Is that, is that kind of neat? That the promise of Yahweh, all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is foreshadowed and shown in scripture now i go out on a on a fairly strong branch here a fairly strong limb and say that all things are foreshadowed through the torah the tanakh and the prophets okay um all things are foreshadowed i don't see nowhere where the, the the secret pre-tribulation rapture is, is foreshadowed anywhere. Um, I do see uh, um, through Moses and uh, the Exodus um, that we will be gathered together once again into him. Um, and that's another, another video for another time. But we really got to study and understand the, the, the old before we even understand what's being spoken of in the new. Um, to come in this new age uh, replacement theology that um, the church today has replaced Israel um, is, is false. Paul, Paul makes that clear in Romans chapter 11. Um, go read it. Romans chapter 11, we are all Jew, Gentile, or Gentiles are grafted in, um, in, the, Jew, in, the, in the house of Israel, um, and those that have been cut off will be reestablished, um, speaking of the house of Israel, um, and don't boast, lest you be cut off, if he cut off the first, he will cut you off, um, that's all in Romans chapter 11. Understanding the old helps us understand what's spoken of in the new. And it would be like coming into a movie midway through and then trying to figure it out. It's one of those movies that's got twists and plots and everything. Yeah, you'll kind of get an idea of what's going on because you see it all the way to the end. Um, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get it. You know, it's just gonna be a plain ass movie to you. Same way with, with scripture. If you don't understand the old understanding the new is is tough um, and regardless of what people think and say you really got to get a grasp an in-depth grasp of the old just like that right there seeing the foreshadow of you know and I've, I've heard I've heard sermons on foreshadowing the the coming Messiah through um, Abraham and Isaac um, but until this morning, I actually he I heard a, a quick one um, on um, the difference between Esau and, and Jacob being of the world and being of the chosen, being of the tribe. Um, but then that kind of made me put all two and two together. And through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... Um, on those three is the pillar of our salvation, the foreshadowing of the pillar of our salvation. Um, Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, is the pillar, the foundation of our salvation. And it is through him and through him alone that we have our salvation. So don't hear me wrong. Uh, but the foreshadowing of that and our born again nature that regardless of whether you were a thief, a murderer, uh, homosexual, um, adulteress, whatever the case may be, when you come into the house and you're grafted into the house, all that's passed away. The old is no longer valid. And we must let go of that. And that's how we're reborn. <clears throat> so I hope this gives you a, a little something to, to go Go dig into a little deeper. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is Old Bill Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next ride.